Okay, our adventures volunteers, I'm just going to show you the um, sphere demonstration quickly. So what you need for this is a uh, number two pencil and a little piece of paper towel and an eraser. Mine doesn't have one, so I'm using this one here. All right, and then using our template right here, we'll get a regular piece of paper that um, we have in the art room. And then we will tape with three pieces of tape, one, two, three, um, down where they would like it, probably about in the center of their paper. And then we're going to ask them a little bit about if they can draw a moon. I think that's probably the best way to go about doing this. So I'm going to turn this over to my son James, being a videographer. And I'm, I'm going to put in kind of a half moon here, like this. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just kind of the idea of it. And then, so James, why don't you hold on to the camera? Okay. Okay. And then we're going to just start shading with, with their really lightly, kind of back and forth, like this. Inside their moon as best that they can. Different ages are going to do better at this than the other ones, but once they do that in one direction, we can teach them a little bit about cross hatching. And what that is, is just taking your pencil and going the opposite direction, or just a different direction from where they were. Trying to keep it about as even as they can. And once they've done that, they can even go over it a couple, another time if they want to. If they feel like it's dark enough. Okay. And then, um, what I'm going to have them do is actually cover using their whole, the whole range of motion here. The whole rest of it, just really lightly, lightly as they can. And then I can go over this section a little bit more if it needs to be dark. Because what's going to happen is we're actually going to be drawing with our eraser as well. Okay. Now, so once they get that done, it's going to look something like that. Um, you can hold the camera. Um, here's what we're going to do. You might, this is going to be your kind of your option too. You might want to tell them that they could even do a second moon inside of this one. And especially for more, you know, the older kids. And just darken it up a little bit more. I'm doing this with one hand, okay. Alright. Now I'm going to need two hands. So, James, I need you to hold the camera. Right here. Okay. And just hold that. No. Make them see, let them see that, okay. And then I'm going to take the piece of paper towel and with their fingers, Stand still, buddy. With their fingers, okay. push it, wrap it around their finger like that. Okay, now show this, show that, show the sphere. There you go. And then they're just going to kind of push, just like this, all the way around. And they push down. They'll have a little bit smaller fingers than me. Um, and then they can kind of smear this all around. And what that's going to do is that's going to um, kind of blur everything. It's going to shade everything. And all your lines will be marked down. Now, next thing to do is to take their eraser, right here, um, from the light source direction. I guess I didn't go over light direction, but maybe I'll try to put up a video for that. Um, keep it on it. Keep it on there, please. And then just have them draw a little circle about the size of maybe about a nickel. And try to get it round as they can. doesn't have to be perfectly round. I can do that, like that. Just keep it in one spot, James. And then um, the other part would be to just lightly take their eraser on this edge right here. Just a little bit in there. And then they can kind of go in towards their little penny size to shape there. There you go. That's good, James. That'll give them an idea of what's going on. Got to keep it in one direction, though, please. Okay. Hold it this way. So they can kind of see it where to go in the same angle. And they can brush away what they've done so far. And then wherever the um, the white marks are, they can take their paper towel and kind of blend that in a little bit if they want to. And then the magic kind of happens after we get this part finished. Okay. And if they're comfortable with where everything is, then they can actually take their mask off. And they can see, so far, this is going to be a problem right there. The paper's going to rip a bit. Brush away on that. 
And now for some people, back up a little bit, James. You're going to want to teach them that they can put a background on this. Back up a little bit, please. Just by going behind the circle and just pretending that line's going to continue back behind. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to show you something cool. Stand up, James. Thank you. Now we're going to take the other piece that got cut out. We'll have that. I'm sorry I didn't say that we needed to do that. And we're going to teach them about shadow, drawing the shadow underneath it. This doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but you want to teach them that the light is coming from this direction. So when light comes from this direction, the shadow ends up going this way. So a little bit of the shadow is going to be here, but most of it's going to be a little bit behind. And it's going to be kind of in maybe an oval shape or so, something like this. Sit still, please. The nice thing about this here is we're actually going to be using it as a mask, and you can teach them about that if you want to. It's used in painting. And if they push down kind of hard like this, they can actually cover up the circle that they're doing, that they already did. They can do some cross hatching on this. You can teach them that closer to the sphere um, is a darker shadow. Okay, and you can do the same technique for shading on this one, just by using the paper towel. Going like that. And then, so what they're going to see is once they pull this away, that none of their shading got um, into their ball. And if you need a little bit more of a contrast, you know, they can go back to it. You can put the same back on again. You can get darker if they want to. You know, like that. James. Why? Just needs to kind of sit in one spot, okay? All right. So they have that. Now, if you want to be more advanced, and if we were being honest, there's actually a reflection that I'm not teaching about. And in object reflection there's usually a reflection from the ground view too and that's it's usually about right here and that's just the light bouncing back on to the object so for advanced students you know like fourth or fifth graders you can teach this if you'd like to um, and then just kind of blend that in there that just adds a little bit more dimensionality and also in advanced mode you can put this back on about right and then just lightly do the outside of this one to give it a more 3D effect. And I'm going to do this really quick. Because we're going to get the idea. Oh, we can use cross hatching with this too. The reason we cross hatch is because it just makes it easier to blend. Okay, blender. Like that. And pull that away. And then you get, you should have kind of that contrast between the light portion of the, the sphere and that. So now if we pull away, you know, that was done fairly quickly. And you can certainly um, embellish this any way that you want to. And uh, if you have any questions, just give me a holler.